Just a year ago today, Diddy was issued a key to New York City. Now, fast forward that year, he's now been indicted in the very city. OK, first of all, stop right there. OK, seven seconds in. Diddy was handed a key to New York. You know how they do that with certain celebrities where the government's like, you get a key to the city. Diddy got a key to New York. I want to know what officials are in on Diddy because there's no way police, feds, government entities did not know what was up, which is why I guess this investigation happened in the first place. Thank goodness good people are taking Diddy down. But that's interesting. Diddy that once showed him love. As prosecutors say, he now faces years and decades behind bars, mm -hmm. giving a whole new meaning to bad boy for life. Mm -hmm. Diddy, whose real name is Sean Combs, was arrested yesterday at a swanky NYC hotel. But before a judge today, he pleaded not guilty to three federal charges, racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud, coercion, transportation mm. to engage in prostitution. He will be held without bail. Now, the energy around the courthouse today wasn't as heightened as maybe expected. Here, there were a few fans out here today, some in their cars yelling free Diddy, some understanding what the victims are feeling in this case and saying this criminal case was a long time coming. Some just surprised he. OK, so a couple of things already. <laughs> the when you got you guys are asking what does key to the city mean it just means that you're honored by the city and you're considered like a good community member and you've done a lot for the city which is true of diddy and i think a lot of really shitty men do this where they donate to charity they want to be upheld as a good citizen to cover the fact that they're actually an awful person and i think this is really what's complicated about these you know situations because diddy isn't I mean, for years, people accused Diddy of many things, including hiring the hitman for Tupac. So like, it's not as if people haven't always rumored about Diddy, but Diddy gave so much to the community, I think, to hide the fact that he was also pillaging and raping behind the scenes, basically. And I do think a lot of government entities had to turn their eye away from him in order for him to get away with all of this, because there's no way some of those people at those, quote, freak parties weren't police, cops, people in the city, and Oh, you know what I really want to see? And I think Cat Williams really said it is I want to see the list of names that come out in association with this. You know how we've been obsessed with Epstein, Epstein, Diddy. At the end of the day, there are always these people in our communities and often we turn a blind eye to them. And I'm really trying to stop to do that. I'm just trying to stop doing that for so many, even for guys who aren't even close to a Diddy, close to an Epstein, right? This has been a real big journey of mine the last year is to say as much as I want to fight and encourage all people of all genders to have an introspective moment with themselves, men that are very obsessed with being men tend to be the people that are primarily predators. And I am looking at you guys with a side eye. And I'm looking at Diddy, I'm looking at Epstein, I'm looking at Trump, I'm looking at anybody who's associated with these powerful men who want to suck the dick of these powerful men in order to get sort of, you know, their careers going or whatever else. I'm looking at you. And I am questioning whether or not you are even very much a Diddy or not. Look at Andrew Tate. Same thing. Tax evasion, gang activity, mafia activity, sex trafficking, regardless of how you feel about these men. OK, and I'm looking at the women that also maybe were in line with these men, not the women who were victims of these men and not men who were victims of these men, because don't even get it twisted. Men and women are absolutely the victims of these crimes. But I want to see because Andrew Tate and Diddy went after both men and women. Remember that they do not care about men. They will fuck you as much as they'll fuck these women and they will ruin your life. So just, okay, this whole like boys club thing. And even, and this is the scary thing with being like sort of a girl's girl is you're not a girl's girl because they're girls. Being a girl's girl, being a guy who's there for your homies is not about uplifting corrupt people because they're women or men. It's about protecting people instead of being misogynistic or misandrist. Like it's about protecting people and not being sexist. It's not about uplifting corrupt people because they're a man, because they're a woman. So don't like don't confuse it because I think a lot of people confuse it. So Andrew Tate, Diddy, I'm looking at everybody who you want to know a good test is who in your friend group thinks Diddy is innocent. Drop them. I'm going to be real. If I hear anybody in my inner circle say, I'm not sure Diddy is guilty. I'll talk to you in like 10, five years when you figured out your shit.
because no fucking way okay I, I wonder how it feels as a foreigner to be involved in our little bubble mess because it is our mess diddy is our mess as americans like we have uplifted him in uh ellen show nighttime shows radio shows we have uplifted diddy for so long in our communities even though so many people had questioned him and how many women became or men became associated with him in hopes to gain from his power i'm looking at a jay-z bro i think we're all looking at jay-z i don't think anybody i know hasn't been like it makes me wonder and then if jay-z then beyonce you from like german um journals and television that this is happening but it's uh, surprising to see it like live and uh, mm -hmm. yeah and i i think it's good that like sexual harassment and this all this is getting a lot of attention because most of the time even with like famous men it's uh, held down and mm -hmm. nobody speaks about it and i don't know if he maybe gets a career afterwards i don't hope but diddy's 54 just to put it in perspective, Diddy's 54, and I looked at this up today, Tupac was 25 when he was murdered. Murdered. By a jealous bitch, allegedly. Allegedly. Right? And it's kind of interesting how much we have uplifted him. And that's why I think society, especially under the patriarchy, is still in denial of its own corrupt nature. It's so interesting, though. Like, Tupac was such a, he was a baby. 25? Just dead. That is so, like, and we're living today with the man who's more than likely to have orchestrated it based off the guy who killed Tupac, who was hired to kill Tupac. And that's what's crazy. Chat says Jay-Z is obviously a creep. Aaliyah and Beyonce were preyed on young. 1,000%. That's why I think Beyonce lost so many respect from women because I think we all knew better about Jay-Z or at least we felt like we did after Elevator Gate. Yeah, I, I will never forget that mem memory of seeing Solange beat up Jay-Z in the elevator and I'm like, oh, he fucked, whatever it was, he fucked up. Not that it, you know, validates like physical violence against somebody. But yeah, Beyonce, I think, <sighs> that's the, you know, that's the question we all have to ask ourselves. When are you the victim in a circumstance and you're trying to get out? And when are you a woman who's complicit in it? What was the woman that helped Epstein? What was her name? Because they're, you know, women are often the secondhand man in a man's sex trafficking ring. And that's the dilemma with these women is like, I think Cassie was 100% a victim. Giselle, thank you, Giselle Maxwell. Giselle was not a victim of, of Epstein, right? I don't know that Beyonce at this point, could be a victim or more complicit. I'm not sure. But Cassie being hit and beaten by Diddy, like she's a victim, right? Like she is a victim and it's clear. And these women went for Diddy. When they had the opportunity, they made it clear. When they felt safe, like I wonder if Justin Bieber and all these other people allegedly who are involved, allegedly, I wonder if they feel unsafe. If Diddy is running a mafia organization or a mafia sort of you know, then there is like that extra fear for their lives. And I'm obviously deeply concerned about that as well, because I think I would be if you were in that situation. But then it makes me wonder, did Justin Bieber's parents sell him out to Diddy? Usher spent time with Diddy. And what did Usher say? Oh, yeah, man, the things I saw were crazy. And then he jokes about it like it's not a big deal. And I'm looking at Usher like, all right, buddy. Interesting. Mm hmm. But yeah, we will see. Now through an attorney, the defense is reportedly confident in this case as Sean Combs' attorney, Mark Agniflio, said he'll fight like hell for his client. So this was this was the first step. We have we have uh, we have a bail appeal scheduled for tomorrow at 3.30 in front of Judge Carter, the district judge assigned to this case. Um, I think that, that we, 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 we made the points that we've been wanting to make. Um, I think he came out. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. Uh, he came to New York. to. Is this the devil himself? Is this the devil himself defending Diddy? You know, there's always the, you know, who who's the devil themselves other than lawyers and bad cops? Like, Jesus, fuck, bro. Establishes innocence. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of the charges. There's nothing that the government said in their presentation today that changes anyone's mind about anything. He's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name and he's going to clear his name. 
uh, and we're going to stand by his side as as hold on monkey d trevi said not tupac did some foul shit i actually i think you're right i always do forget this tupac did do some foul shit right didn't he didn't he rape somebody didn't he rape an ex-girlfriend i could be wrong but i think that's true and so that is some foul fucking shit i think tupac said he was innocent but who knows right i think that is i think that is something that we learned i don't know if it's true but i do you know if obviously that's true like fucking trash right if it's true and that's the problem this is the struggle with all of it is this true and I just wish we knew, you know, but yeah, he did go to prison for it. As far as my memory, yeah, chat says he went to prison. I do remember that. So what did Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson's a convicted rapist as well. I do believe in redemption. I deeply believe in it, right? But it has to be from a place of deep change. Because look, if rapists can't change, if if people don't get a right to change, then we have to give them an avenue, I'm sorry, for being able to end their lives. It is more humane to give them an avenue to end their life than give them an avenue to like sit in prison for 50 years, right? So like either we believe rapists can be reformed or we don't. And would I want to marry a convicted rapist? No, but nobody says they have to get married. You know, maybe they're great engineers. Maybe they're helpful at bus stops. Maybe they can fucking clean some streets. I don't fucking know. But a part of me is like, I don't know why it's more humane to keep people locked up in prison for the rest of their lives. Just give them an avenue to die with grace. You know what I mean? It just seems so strange that we're, we want to torture people by keeping them alive and that makes us feel better. Like torturing people does not make you more moral or better. <laughs> Chat says 50 Cent is loving all of this. 50 Cent is, you know, I don't love 50 Cent for voting Trump. You know, we're going to have to agree to disagree on that. But I do love the memes he's creating around the Diddy stuff. As he does, we believe in him wholeheartedly. Um, he didn't do these things. This was a 10 year relationship. There's no coercion, there's no crime. There's basically just, you know, so someone who brought a civil case and now uh, is, is finding themselves as a, w a witness in a, in a criminal case. And we're gonna fight this case uh, with everything we have as is. So for those asking why didn't Diddy flee, fun fact, Diddy is doing the compliance route. He gave up his passports allegedly. He's saying, put me on house arrest. I'm safe to be trusted. Diddy is playing the long game of wanting to get out of this situation and being trusted. He like gave himself up to authorities. He's being compliant. So he's definitely playing an interesting game. And obviously the defense, not the defense, obviously the prosecution is saying like, do not let this man go. They're saying like, even if he's compliant, he's still a danger because these crimes happened in his house. So giving him house arrest isn't going to protect people from Diddy. Burn. What a burn. What a burn. Is he? And eventually he's going to be shown to be innocent. Um, and so tomorrow we fight again. And we fight. We'll fight every day until we don't have to fight anymore. So here's what happened. Like you literally beat Cassie, bro. And then he had the audacity to come on Instagram and be like, hey, man, I really did some shit, man. I really apologize. Shut the fuck up, bitch. He beat the fuck out of Cassie as a grown-up. He was a grown fucking man. Shut the fuck up. And this afternoon, Diddy appeared in this federal courthouse that you see mm. again right behind me. Now, according to sources, inside that building, he appeared... And I'm really pissed they're not going to stream this because there's no cameras in federal court. So we're not even going get, to get, get to see it, which is like a bummer stone face and uncuffed while at the defense table. His arraignment began around 2.30 Eastern today with some supporters on his side, including his three adult sons, mm. that's Justin, Quincy, and Christian. Man, this one on the left looks just like him. He's got his Diddy jaw. He got a Diddy jaw. Prosecutors say Diddy is dangerous and used his power, authority, and intimidation to essentially get away with his crimes. Under the indictment, it says, I'm going to speed her up. The defendant abused, threatened, and coerced women and others to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Now, during court today, it's been reported the government wants him to be detained ahead of trial. The government argued Diddy set up freak-offs, forcing sex and masturbating during it. He also filmed some of those encounters. He stalked the room with narcotics so that female victims could continue for multiple days. Ugh. Prosecutors say the defendant committed other physical assault. You, so listen to what he's saying. This isn't just some kink party, which, by the way... All the BDSM parties I've ever went to, no narcotics or drugs were allowed because you didn't want to violate anyone's consent. He kept women drugged up so they didn't know how much pain they were in. So they couldn't say no. They kept people so fucked up, drugged up that no matter what pain they inflicted on these women, they wouldn't feel it in the moment. So they wouldn't protest in the moment because they literally weren't even conscious. And then they filmed them. They have them on tape. 
And that's the problem is like, this isn't just some guy that was having a kink party. This is some guy who targeted sex trafficked, moved one one group of people to another place. Okay. Like the that that was the trafficking part. And then he was abusing people of all genders, allegedly. By using drugs to make them incapable of fighting back. And then when they did fight back, he pulled their hair. Right. He abused them. He punched them. He kicked them. And allegedly he did. Yes. Chat says, didn't he also essay a man? Allegedly it was men and women he targeted. Assaults, kidnapping, and arson. He surrounded himself with and used firearms, including the three defaced AR-15s that were seized, one in LA, two in Miami, in his bedroom closet. Mm. Now, while the victim hasn't been named, you can't help but think it's Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie. I love Cassie. There's so many of her music videos I used to watch, like, religiously coming up. Like, I didn't even think about her being with Diddy. Like, I never even processed it. And now that I'm having all these flashbacks of me watching her videos and dancing to her music, I'm like, holy fuck. Like this girl who I thought was living this beautiful life was fucking being abused so severely by this man. As many of the claims in the indictment echo her November 2023 lawsuit. One argument made by prosecutors was the victim sought to leave a freak off and he assaulted her. When Ugh. hotel security was helping the victim leave the hotel, the defendant attempted to bribe the officer with a handful of cash. The guard refused to be bought. The defendant tried to get the video. Now, this echoes a video that was released by CNN mm -hmm. just months ago where Diddy is seen brutally assaulting his then girlfriend Cassie at an L.A. hotel around March of 2016. Mm. Now, the prosecution argued the video disappeared from the hotel server. It's not a coincidence, prosecutors say. Which... And I know Abba and Preach covered this. Abba used to, no, Preach used to work for, I guess, like in security. And he said it wouldn't be uncommon for him to have to sign NDAs. And it wouldn't be uncommon for people to just like make footage disappear. So you think about that. And this is why they say like people in high positions of power, they're not any better. That's why this glorification of billionaires, this glorification of the rich, we have to be careful. We have to be careful of glorifying people in power. If people in power use their means of power to do these types of things. The cover-up continued for another seven years. There was a civil suit, again, that alluding to Cassie's lawsuit in mid-November of 2023, that detailed this assault at the Intercontinental Hotel. Mm. The defendant denied it, calling it lies. This is what prosecutors are saying inside the courtroom today. Now, according to prosecutors, witnesses they interviewed have universally expressed fear. The defendant has mm -hmm. contacted witnesses who received grand jury subpoenas. He contacted- What is this? What is, what is this video? Where is it from? Why is everybody happy? one victim as well. Now, while Diddy's attorney argue he's not a flight risk, prosecutors actually say the opposite. Now, they argued the defendant is a wealthy man. It allows him to flee quickly mm. and without detection. His counsel has taken steps to minimize flight risks to set up the argument made today. But then his incentives were entirely different, and he flew to New York actually two weeks ago. Now, it was reported that about two weeks ago, Diddy was actually up in Harlem. It's unclear what he was doing there, but there were reports that he was, he did make that visit around two weeks ago. And another shocking development, prosecutors say Diddy had what appeared to be narcotics found in his hotel room just last night. Now, pink powder that previously tested positive for ecstasy and other drugs and prosecutors say this hold is- Hold up, hold up, hold up. Black Enterprise says, Kid Cudi confirms Cassie's story that Diddy allegedly blew up his car. Former bad boy recording artist Cassie has filed a lawsuit against her boyfriend, former boyfriend and label owner Sean Diddy Combs. In one of his accusations, she claimed that Diddy allegedly blew up the car of an artist that she was seeing at the time. Kid Cudi has confirmed her version of events. This man is literally, he thinks he's like a mob boss. And maybe he is because that's what that's how people are handling this case. They're, we're looking at a criminal enterprise. That's what they're calling it, a criminal enterprise. This is what we're dealing with. This is a modern, do modern day mafia boss. Like this is what it is. This is what it's like. We are there. This is our history. This is our Cap El Capone. <laughs> like this is our, this is our gangster. And now we have to decide as a community: Are we going to make excuses for this man? Hopefully the fuck not. Hopefully the fuck not. And yes, he he was in gangs before. He does have a criminal record. He served time. So Diddy isn't a person without a record, right? But this is like, this is what we're seeing. We're seeing that the, like he is being tried because of an enterprise situation. Like this isn't a joke. And this is also what I think they're going to get Andrew Tate on. I do. I think this is also what they're going to, they're trying to get Andrew Tate on. And if it took them this long to get Diddy over 25 years, you, that's what I'm saying. You just wait. 
But I think Andrew Tate is doing something similar. I do. It's a heartland detention case. Now, the defense asked a judge for Diddy to be given a bail package, which would include posting a $50 million bail using the equity of his home. But prosecutors say the bail package is woefully inadequate. It only focuses on him being a flight risk. Now, federal prosecutors say that they have spoken to over 50 witnesses. They have sworn out warrants for cloud accounts. The search has yielded 90 cell phones and 30 other devices, including a surveillance system and the freak offs were corroborated. Now, meanwhile, the defense said they could tell the indictment was coming in the fall, fall of last year. After federal agents raided Diddy's Miami and L.A. home in March, defense counsel took Diddy's passports. And any time he traveled, they actually told prosecutors. That's what the defense says. Now, if you remember from our previous coverage here at Law and Crime, we had reported that Diddy was out kind of gallivanting over this summer. Mm -hmm. Essentially, he was seen mm -hmm. in South Florida riding his bike, going to the beach, hanging out with friends. He was seen in L.A. He was seen white water rafting in Wyoming. Now, the defense says that prosecutors knew any time that Diddy was traveling domestically because essentially they wanted to build that trust with prosecutors to ensure that he wouldn't be a flight risk. But the defense argued the raids were allegedly they kept the authorities aware of his comings and goings to like build the rep like build his reputation as like a good person who thinks he's innocent and all of this is bullshit. But mm, mm, you know, frightening again, those raids happening in March of just this year. Now, Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnifilo, said that the March 25th raid that happened this year were frightening. He says that lasers were pointed at his children. They oh were God. marched out in front of the house with news reporters and helicopters oh. handcuffed for two hours. And again, the children that they're discussing right now is Justin and Christian Combs, who are there and present at Diddy's L.A. home. I'm sure he raised his sons well. I'm sure they're following right in the steps of their father. And they were completely innocent throughout this all. Um, no criminal charges or anything has come about from that. Mm, OK, maybe he kept his kids out of it after all case and they didn't want the raids or anything like that to happen again. At the time of the raids, his attorneys, his being Diddy's, issued a statement in part saying that the raids against both of his homes, again in L.A. and Miami, were essentially an overzealous use of military level force. The defense went on to say Mr. Combs flew to New York to say, you want me? I know you want me. Here he is. While worried that he did have an airplane, the defense says that they do have to sell it. There is a financial management company that deals with these types of issues, so they're trying to, again, sell Diddy's private jet to, again, assure that he's not a flight risk. Now, when it comes to the charges, Diddy's attorney argued there's interesting how much they're playing this game i don't know why they're doing it chad asked me that earlier like why do you think it's better for him i'm telling you nobody gets away with this much bullshit unless they know people okay i don't think it's that much of a conspiracy it obviously isn't that like power corrupts so he's obviously got friends in government okay and government officials like regardless of how you feel about people like they're not great when it comes to how they act when they're in power. And I think they justify it because they feel like it's for the greater good. Like we've never heard that before, right? Everything is done for the greater good, isn't it? It's just a question of like, is this really for the greater good? And so I think Diddy obviously has connections. Epstein had connections. Everybody, and that's why I say, you know, when people kind of romanticize celebrity romantic, like, oh, I would love to be you know, oh, what if Diddy slid, in, slid into my DMs? I'm like, why would you want a celebrity to slide into your DMs? Because I look at the powerful and I think like, nah, you did some shit to get there, bro. I do look at people in power and I think, nah, nah, nah. You did some shit to get there. I don't want to know what it is. Goodbye. If regular people in your regular life are doing some shit behind closed doors, celebrities in power, politicians, nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. Stay out my DMs. I don't want to talk to you. That's why people who seek fame, I look at you with a raised eyebrow. I do. I do. I look at everybody. As much as I love Lady Gaga, I look at her with a raised eyebrow. And I think this bitch made it worth 300 million. Her now husband, our new husband is going to be worth 600 million. Together, 900 million. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'm looking at you. Because power gives you access, but you don't get there without networking. So who you know and who you've been talking to. Who do you know and who the fuck have you been talking to? Okay, if bullshit ha is happening on a smaller scale on YouTube with all this bullshit and taking advantage of people and assaults, what do you think is happening there? It's just with more money and higher stakes, but it's still bullshit. I'm going to stay home and mind my business. I ain't talking to nobody. This is what I'm saying. People are trouble. People are trouble.
to one victim in count two, the sex trafficking charge. Mr. Combs wrote a very large check to someone he was in a relationship with for 10 years. And then the defense argued that people got in line for checks. He had no idea. Mm. 12 victims. Again, this is all alluding to the sexual misconduct lawsuits that Diddy still faces. And the defense says, I didn't know. I'm happy there's only one. He went on to argue that the case is manageable. Pretrial services says that he has a criminal record, but he was acquitted. He's ready to do that again. So what is Mr. Combs doing in New York City? He being the defense attorney says he's here for treatment and therapy. But again, prosecutors say just yesterday. Oh, shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Shut the fuck up. How about that? I mean, I need some therapy. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> Shadow B says not Taylor Swift, though. You know, girl, I don't trust her neither. I don't trust her neither. I don't trust Taylor Swift. She know too many famous shitty men. She's been with too many shitty men for me to look at her. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know about her. I don't know about her either. I don't know about her either. Mm -mm. I don't trust her. I don't trust nobody that famous or rich. Mm -mm. Narcotics were allegedly found in his hotel room. Back to the victim in this case, Diddy's attorney argued Mr. Combs is not a perfect person. Oh, yeah. And Taylor dated a minor. You're right. You're right, Monkey D. Trevi. You're right. Taylor did date a minor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't trust no Taylor Swift. Was it Taylor Lautner? Is that who it was? Wasn't he 17 and she was 24? Was it somebody else? Who did she date? Who is the 17 year old? Taylor Swift dated a minor. Taylor and Taylor dated in 2009, meeting on the set of Valentine's Day. Yeah. She dated Harry Styles when he was 18 and she was 23. She dated Connor Kennedy when she was 22 and he was 18 and still in high school. Taylor Swift be a hoe, okay? I'm over it. Canceled. Not interested. Bye, bitch. Person. They say the toxic relationship between the two, again, it's victim one, but alluding to kind of the lawsuit that happened in November of 2023, you can't help but believe that victim one is Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie. Now, they say these toxic relationships were mutual. Now he's saying that Diddy is essentially trying to be better for the rest of his days. If there's one thing we've seen, we should stand with people who are trying to get the help that they need. Now, Agnifilo argued that the hotel footage found its way out. He says he wondered how that even happened. The defense didn't have it. The government had it. It got out on a day Donald mm. Trump didn't have any court proceedings. Mr. Combs saw it and issued an apology, and he wanted to do that. Wow, thanks for your apology. That. Now, let's play that apology video for you real Ugh. quick. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life but sometimes you got to do that i was up i mean i hit rock bottom victim, I no victim language victim language the darkest time in my life i hit rock bottom i have to you are the spawn of satan sir you are the spawn of satan no excuses my behavior on that video is inexcusable i take full responsibility for my actions in that video Go to prison then. Go to prison then. You take full accountability. Go to prison for domestic violence. Go to prison then. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted Girl, now. I was so disgusted at myself hitting my girlfriend in the face. I was so disgusted. I paid off the hotel lobby to give me the footage and make it disappear. Go to prison then. Go. Go to prison, bitch, and I'll believe. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy. I to go into rehab. Did they tell you also to go to prison? House arrest? Rehabilitation? Anything? Anything? I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. Shit! Okay, to God. Your God gonna crash your house down on you like Jericho, bitch. Okay? Your God gonna make you sing like the walls of Jericho crumbling, bitch. Okay? Don't... You leave her out of this. You leave God out of this, okay? Bitch. I'm so sorry. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh my God. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. No, Jesus. I'm truly sorry. 
Now, Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnifilo, argued two people were in that hotel room that day, an issue that Mr. Combs had more than one girlfriend was essentially at the center of the argument that he alleges. Victim one was looking through his phone and saw that, then hit him in the head with a cell phone and took his clothing. So he came out of the hotel room in a towel. And again, while Cassandra Ventura, a.k.a. Cassie, wasn't named in the indictment or mentioned in court by name today, you can't help but again wonder because, again, this mirrors the March 2016 brutal assault video that was released on CNN just months ago, as well as um, mentions some of the um, allegations that were also in her um, federal lawsuit against Diddy that, again, was settled within one day of it being filed in federal court. Now, Agnifilo reportedly argued they were in love, but the victim ended up marrying the trainer that Diddy got for her. Agnifilo claims that the two... Diddy and victim one were cheating on each other, but the defense says that she has two kids now with a trainer. Now, according to the defense, victim one called Diddy's lawyer and said that she wanted to write a book. But if you want to buy the rights, you'll have the rights for $30 million. Now, that mm -hmm. has also been alleged to have been the settlement payout from Cassie's lawsuit as well, too. Now, the defense says that we have a recorded conversation. It did not go well for her and her lawyer. Then November 2023 comes and she sued Diddy. Again, the lawsuit has been settled. The only one that has been settled since he has been facing that mountain of lawsuits um, since November of 2023. Agnifilo reportedly went on to say when he contacts witnesses, it's not to stop. I wonder what this woman's thinking. I would just love to know, like, what is this woman thinking? Stop a criminal investigation. He said, why is it depicted as a one sided thing? There's a 30 million reasons, a dollar a piece. She said, I'm going to stop. Hold on. Chat says it's like with those little Mexican drug lords that are un do unthinkable things, but then they go to church because they're all Catholics and pray the Virgin Mary. It's literally the mafia. Have you read Mario Puzo's The Godfather or anything Mario Puzo's ever read? It's literally like these men will murder somebody and then go to church on Sunday. They'll literally like rape a woman and then go to church on Sunday. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is literally wrong with you? To write a book, you can buy the rights. When talking about the most recent lawsuit, which Diddy faced from former Danity Kane member Don Richard, Agnifilo said this Don Richard lawsuit and Miss Harper, that's alluding to Kalina Harper, who used to be Diddy's dirty money group, again with Don Richard. Um, they were from the same band. The lawsuit says that he had a couple of inappropriate things. Miss Harper, again, that being Kalina Harper, said that was not her experience. This is not intimidation. And there was nothing wrong with that. He said, I'm not even sure mm -hmm. Don Richard is a witness in this case. My client hasn't done a darn thing. We have interviewed at least six of these males. We asked it, did it seem non consensual? Anyone too drunk or too high? They all said no. We live in a world where people feel too afraid to come out as trans. You think I'm going to believe any of the possible victims that they don't feel afraid to come out against Diddy, especially if there's some sort of like, what if these people have to make a decision between disappearing or not coming forward? Because think about it. It's not like Diddy dies and his criminal enterprise is no more. I mean, maybe to some extent, like even if he goes to prison, people orchestrate criminal agencies out inside of prison all the time. It's not like, you know, it, the fear for the victims is if they come forward, then Diddy puts a mark on them and goes, make this person's life hell and every person that they've ever known make their life hell. The fear here is that if you come forward, your life is over. You might have to go into, what is it called? Witness protection. Like what if these people have to literally restart their lives with a different face and a different name just to bring this man down? And you think, God, I only have one life to live. You know, this is what's so dangerous about situations like this is how do you get victims to feel safe enough to come forward in a world that does not and shows time and time again that they're very bad at protecting victims? You're probably not. Because it's too scary. It's too scary in a world that's, you know, blowing up people's pagers or blowing up people's homes and they justify it, right? It's just there's so much here that I think we're not... There is just a certain bubble in the world of people that are so deeply corrupt. So deeply corrupt. You know what I'm very frustrated by? I've been really thinking about this lately. And I've been thinking about all the men that I will get pretty upset with. Like I'm thinking about somebody in my own life where I'm like, hey, like you hurt this, like you hurt multiple women in this process of what you're doing. And though the scale of how you hurt them is in this area, so there's like a lot of room to recover and rehabilitate, like you need to hold yourself accountable. And I'll have other women say to me, you know, sometimes I think you have a personal issue with this person because you're reacting so passionately. You are contributing to women not coming forward, to men not coming forward. When you sit there and you call my desire to hold men who hurt women accountable. And you say, oh, Brittany must have something personal going on. Brittany must be taking this personal. Why aren't you not taking it personal? But why aren't you upset? Why aren't you upset that these men are abusing women or anybody, regardless of gender? Why aren't you also upset? 
because it's not a part of your value system. So when people see me get upset on behalf of victims, because I'm like, oh, hell no. And they go, Brittany must have something personal. This must be trauma related. You, you have a vendetta against this person. I'm all about forgiveness after you hold yourself accountable. The problem with these men is they're not doing that. So you've got a Diddy who comes here, gives us the same bullshit script all these predators always give us, the same script I'm heard, I've heard from men my whole life, the same script shitty men have given me my whole fucking, Brittany, I was just out of my mind, Brittany. Brittany, you don't understand. I lost my shit for a minute. I was in a really dark place, Brittany. You don't get it. Like, I was really confused. I really loved her, Brittany, but I just like, she was driving me crazy. You don't really understand, Brittany. I was like in a really low point. Oh, you don't understand, Brittany. I like lost my faith in God and I got tempted. You don't understand, Brittany. Like, I understand you're an idiot. I understand you're useless. I understand that you cannot be trusted. That's what I understand. And then to have a woman come out the left side and be like, I think you just have something going on and you're taking this personal <laughs> bitch. Bitch. I love you. Please don't make me an enemy when the enemy is right in front of us. Satan himself is in front of us on our kitchen, kneeling, crying. I'm sorry. I just turned away from Jesus. I just needed Jesus. And I just turned at the temptation. The temptation was 17 years old. And you're 40. So explain it. Fucking explain it. Explain it. Explain it. And you can't because you're a piece of fucking shit. So go ahead and keep blaming these 17 year old girls. All these 40 year old men are targeting them. But you are off the Christmas list. Okay, you are off my favorites list until you get your shit together. He argued, is it sex trafficking if everyone wants to be there? Nick Nivolo says, no, it's not. We don't want the federal government in our bedroom. Now, according to reports from inside, Mr. Combs says that he had nothing to do with guns that, and how they're kept inside his house. Oh. He needed. <laughs> he didn't know there were guns inside of his house? Please. Security and the sections of L.A. and Miami where he lives. Did they do it wrong? Not for us to say. Not his gun. R. Kelly? Question mark. That involved children. They cannot consent. So alluding again to the R. Kelly case, which was also brought in this very courthouse right behind me. Now, the defense argued that they do have a substantial bail package. Some family members were there in the courtroom today. Again, we all saw um, Justin Combs, Christian Combs and Quincy in there. The defense says that they do love him. A $50 million bond secured by a $48 million piece of property. Again, that being Diddy's home. And then on August 20th, they paid off $18 million for the mortgage. While the lawyers went back and forth during arguments, the judge would ultimately make that final decision. The judge said in the case, I find the presumption has not been mm -hmm. rebutted. The mm -hmm. judge said there has been significant violence and weapons around. Also, coercion of witnesses, even gentle coercion can be effective. Mm -hmm. The judge said the type of behavior we're talking about happens also behind closed doors. The judge said, I thank your family members for coming, but Diddy will not be released. I'm hearing that there will be an appeal for the bail hearing set tomorrow around 3.30 Eastern time. Again, in this very courthouse that you see right behind me. Um, of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on any. OK, this is what I think is interesting, too. And I appreciate the judge not letting him out of that courtroom or out of that prison holding cell because he does want house arrest very badly. And I want to know what's up with that. Like, why do you want it so badly? Now, again, he's complying. He's playing the game. Hopefully they have enough evidence. And I think they do to move forward in this case. But this is a big deal. This is historically a big deal. Big deal for the music industry. Big deal for a lot of victims. And big deal for celebrity culture. I've been hearing it from everybody else. Like the list of celebrities we're going to get is going to be intense. And I'm ready. Burn it to the ground. You know when people say eat the rich? This is it, girl. And we're eating good, okay? This is what they mean. Because they're looking at you like, I know you did not just get there on accident. Why are you so goddamn wealthy? What did you do that the rest of us aren't doing that's very specifically playing to these structures and that is allowing these kinds of men to flourish? Okay? So we are going to eat good and I'm here and I don't even care if I gain 100 pounds, I'm eating, okay? Cat Williams already told us. People have already been saying it. Cassie is proof of it. And I do think this is just the iceberg. I really, really do. And I'm ready. We need a refresher. But remember, this refresher doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean this is just another cycle. We are in another cycle. And there will be others to replace them. There will be other, you know, criminals. There will be other corrupt people. There will be other rapists, other sex traffickers. And that's why you have to be careful with any of these people, giving them even an ounce. And I hate to say this, and I'm going to say it the way I'm going to say it. And maybe this is from my religious background, but I'm not sure. 
and maybe this is a little too Jordan Peterson of me, but here we go. You give in to temptation once. You give in to temptation twice. You give in to temptation three times. And now it's not giving in to temptation. It's a lifestyle. Okay? So first you start off with maybe lying to your spouse about where you are after work. You just really want to go to the bar and relax and you don't want to be nagged. Okay. Then you lie to your spouse about the Instagram model whose DMs you slid into pathetically. Hey, girl, what's up? How are you? <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're tempted to maybe even meet up with somebody, some girl you saw on Facebook, some guy you saw on Facebook. And now you're lying. There's an affair. It's physical. And now another person is involved. This isn't a temptation. This isn't a moment of weakness. This is now a pattern, a lifestyle, the kind of person you are. Temptation comes in all forms. My kid was acting out, so I gave him a little pinch on the butt. My kid was acting out, so I slapped him on the face. My kid was acting out, I put them to sleep without dinner for three nights in a row. Then it turned into breakfast, and now lunch, and now they haven't eaten anything all day. Now you're just a fucking child abuser, and you were five steps ago. You start with something small, you get to something big, you have to stop yourself when it's small. And when it's big, then you have to do a whole revamping of the consciousness. So the reason I'm so particular about people's bad habits and the reason I'm willing to be lenient on people when they tell me I've been having an affair, I was going to leave my wife, I was going to do these things, I was lying, I was doing these things, but I was crazy. You don't understand I was crazy. Okay, I'll give you some time to figure out if you're done being crazy. But the moment you blame her, the moment you accuse her of being the reason you had to do it, I had to do it, Brittany. She was driving me crazy. I had to do it. You don't understand. She wasn't having sex with me. I had to do it. She wasn't doing this. I had to do it. Okay. Are you you taking any accountability? No? Okay. Then that's just who you are. This whole idea of it was just a moment. It was just a thing. Why do you think so badly of me? You're blaming a 17-year-old. You're, account, you're holding a 17-year-old more accountable than the 40-year-old man that hit on her. You're, you're literally holding people accountable who aren't even guilty and not even themselves. I will give you a chance to go to therapy. I will give you a chance to be better. But if you don't get better and you blame everybody else, you're just a bad person. Now, you're not a bad person forever, but you're doing bad things. And if you keep doing them forever... Sounds like you're stuck in a loop. Sounds like you're stuck in a loop. And that's the problem. Is everybody is stuck in a loop and they think, if I just pray to God, if I just convert, if I just, whatever, it will be fixed. If it was going to be fixed, it wasn't going to be with God's help. It was going to be with your own action. Your actions are what matter. And if you keep blaming everyone else for your, your issues and the reason you were tempted, you're not really facing yourself. Diddy says, I was in a bad place. I hit rock bottom. I hit rock bottom. Rock bottom isn't for abusers. Rock bottom is for people who have completely lost their way in regards to their relationship with self. Diddy didn't lose himself. He was playing the role he is in this moment, which is the devil himself. For the devil himself to face himself, that is a really difficult thing. How would the devil himself face himself? Because only the devil himself could traffic people, drug people so they don't feel the pain in their bodies, get consent taken away from them, prey on all kinds of people in all kinds of ways. Criminal enterprise was created. How does the devil himself face himself? Honestly, I don't care. Not my my job to figure it out. But before you become the devil... Catch yourself before it gets too big. Catch yourself before it gets too big. Start with yourself today and ask yourself, what types of temptation are you giving into that genuinely is against your values? And figure out how to stop it before it gets bigger. It's kind of like that scene from uh, um, Spirited Away where No Face is like his regular self, but then he gets tempted because he loses himself in sin 
And so he gorges himself to become something to impress her, but he ends up becoming like a demon himself. And then he has to vomit it all out. Vomit it out before you become Satan himself. Chad says, hey, Brittany, does it feel like you are preaching to people yet they hear it but don't want to change? I don't preach to people and I don't expect people to change. I give them the tools to change and if it works and they change, great. But I do not expect people to change. I expect people to do exactly what they were going to do. I never expect people to do anything except what they were always going to do, whether that's kill somebody, rape somebody, love somebody, whatever. It's not my job to ever preach. It is only my job to state my boundaries, my beliefs, and my my way of doing things. And if it works and there's like it works for you and you want to use that tool, do it. But I stopped – like I will say this is an experience I had when I was younger, you know, like – preaching to people, helping people. I thought if I just like went to them and I helped them, they would get it. You can't help people. You can only be helpful when they need your help and they take it or when they utilize the tool. But you can't really change people. You can only give them the tools and see if they use it. And then think about yourself. Think about all the ways that it's hard for you to go to the gym every day or eat the right amount of protein or do enough push-ups a day. I'm speaking for myself here. You know, think about how hard it is for you to be disciplined and then you have the audacity to ask somebody else. I never ask people to be anything other than who they are. The only thing I make clear is like how I'm going to interact with them. That's the only thing I can ever do as a person is choose how I interact with them but I never, ever ask anyone to change. Let's see, Chet says, wild observation, but I've actually never seen a person who has cheated or been abusive get right with their God. It seems like they just repeat the cycle, hurt people, apologize, find God, repeat. I think a lot of people can be like that, for sure. I've heard of some stories of people who made reform, but the gap between when they did the thing and when they reformed was like 10 years. So that's the dilemma is we think change happens overnight. Change happens in slow increments over many years. You know, now the change can happen in different ways. Like, you know, for some people, it's it's like I always say tools take a certain amount of time to be utilized and then the whole picture ends up being solidified. So I remember I got therapy. I did like a year of therapy and I was like, cool, I got the tool I needed. I got it. Thank you. Boop. And then I went and did this and then I went and did this and then I went for like another year and I did like meditation and then I did this year and I did like exploration and then I did this year. It's not about, but see how it's all an accumulation of years each tool takes its own amount of years. And then over the year, it's like I have a 30-year journey, right? Like therapy might have taken one year, but I had a 30-year journey of figuring myself out. 30 years. And if you want to say less than 30, like when I was eight years old to 30, that's a long fucking time. That's 22 years of who the fuck am I questions. For 22 years, I had been asking myself like, who the fuck am I and should I kill myself? Since I was eight fucking years old, that's a lot of fucking burden to put on a child and a growing person when some people never even think about that in their daily life. Love that for them. But also, I, you know, I grew up like this little neurodivergent kid who didn't know what was going on. And now here I am. But like that was 22 years of a journey. Nothing happened overnight for me. No matter how quick it sounds, it didn't happen overnight. And there's this illusion that it did. You know what's ironic? It's people like me. When we're little queer kids sitting at home, crying into our pillows, thinking if we should kill ourselves because we're gay, we think, oh my God, we're the devil. Oh my God, I'm such a horrible person. I'm gay. Well, Diddy's out here raping people and he's just like, man, I was really in a dark place, bro. And I'm like, what? a dark place? I feel, I felt guilty as a kid, not now. I feel bad being gay. You raped people and you don't even feel as, you don't even feel sorry. That's crazy. That is a very different lived experience. People are out here serial treating on their, like cheating on their partners. They don't even feel bad. Or if they feel bad, it's only because they got caught. I've never even cheated on somebody. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, am I a horrible partner? I want to be a good partner. Oh my God. Like that's crazy to me. How many like people are out here doing the worst things to people and they never think to themselves, am I a bad person? Yes, bitch. Yes. Now, are you always going to be a bad person? I don't know. But it's none of my business to help you figure it out. Not a, no, you know, that's crazy. 
You don't have many people I know who are just autistic and they think I'm such a shit person because I don't know social cues. Diddy is fucking people. He's raping people and he doesn't even process he's a shitty person. He thinks he changed because he got some therapy. Sir, you're currently in current time running a criminal enterprise, allegedly. What do you mean you changed? Is the criminal enterprise currently in motion? What does this man mean I changed? <sighs> Scooter says, are these people considered ones because they, there seems to be zero introspection? Oh, Diddy? No. No, Diddy's a, f a perfect 2A. No, these are not ones. A one could never be as accomplished as Diddy. <laughs> Diddy is accomplished. Diddy ran a full enterprise. No, no, no. Diddy is, is definitely not a one. He's way too fucking accomplished. No, 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 no. Introspection does not mean people agree with me. Introspection is about knowing yourself. And Diddy knows himself. He knows he's a fucking piece of shit. He might not be a good person, guys. He might actually be the devil. So for Diddy, being introspective is like, so I'm the devil. <sighs> Who should I rape today? He's being plenty introspective. You know, like introspection doesn't mean like people become moral. It's about knowing yourself. Introspection is knowing the self. And if Diddy is, yeah, Machiavellian, exactly, Taylor. If, if Diddy is Machiavellian, if Diddy's like, a villain. He knows himself enough to know he's going to rape people. Ow. So you know what I mean? This idea. Now, I think like that's why twos are so interesting because they live within the mechanism of the bubble. I doubt Diddy ever sits there and thinks, am I just like stardust in the universe? I doubt Diddy ever realizes like, you know, you're just like an animal evolved on a planet, right, bro? I don't think Diddy ever sits there and thinks, you know, could I have been more than this? Could I have done something else? I don't, th I think Diddy thinks like, my dick is hard. I'm going to rape somebody. That's how f Diddy goes, I want to be a billionaire. I want to be a criminal mastermind. I want to do these things. He's like this, you know what I mean? I don't think, he. I think he thinks, fuck it. I'm going to live for a little time. I'm going to do my shit and I'm going to, you know, make the best of it in his own fucking fucked up way. Man, I said fuck and rape a lot in this. I'm going to get demonetized. Like the stream, guys. Your levels are definitely morally neutral. So being a shitty person wouldn't drop you a level, right? It wouldn't drop you a level. I do think overall fives tend to be less violent and uh, less likely to fuck with people. Absolutely. And I do think like being a level five, practicing introspective level fiveness in your fiveness, you are probably going to be a better person than a worse person. Like we just had this great discussion on the VC because we do events every month for the Discord. It helps fund the content. So I offer like events and we just had a great one. And that's where we really deep dive into the philosophy stuff. Just because for stream, it's much better for me to get on here and be like, Moses is a bitch. He's a fucking pussy. But if I'm being like five Brittany and I'm really meditating on it, he's just a person on a journey on a planet. But it's so much better for stream to be like, he's a pussy. You know, it's so much better. If you want to be very dead serious about Diddy, that was someone's baby at one point. And that baby got fucked along their journey. And it made decisions with the tools that it had to come to these conclusions. Now, I don't know why Diddy does anything the way he does it. Like, I don't know. And at this point, I don't care. I don't care what the devil himself is doing. But I will say I raise an eyebrow at people that defend Andrew Tate. With everything they know, they have to know everything that's going on. I raise an eyebrow at anyone that supports Diddy, of course. <laughs> like, I'm going to raise an eyebrow at these people. Introspect introspection or not, right? It's levels. So it depends on how deep and the layer you're going. And Diddy went far enough in the bubbles to say, I want to be the king of this bubble. And this is how in my bubble, I become the king. I become a criminal mastermind. That's like his bubble and his height of his bubble. So there you go. You know, <sighs> there it is. <laughs> I lost count of how many times bitch was said. Definitely over 10. Oh, yeah. The, the language really comes out of me. You know what I'm saying? And I just bet some bitch somewhere is like, I think Brittany's too harsh on these men. These men are on a journey too. fuck their journey. Fuck Diddy and his journey, bro. Let's see. Uh, how do you determine your level? Sorry, this is the first time I'm hearing about the structure. Actually, fun fact, I have a two-hour video on my level system. 
It's linked down below in the description. Please check it out. It's actually kind of outdated now. I should make a new one. The problem is like it's always going to be outdated because I'm always working on it. But um, in the description, there is a video on my level system. You can check it out. It's something that I created on my own journey. It's just my little contribution to the philosophy bubble. So it's my little philosophy on introspection. You get, You can check it out. Um, let's see. Monkey says in the scenario where the one is not taking to the cupcake, are they one because they can't recognize that they are starving and that the cupcake would help them? Yes. To to a deep extent, the one can't, well, either they can't figure it out or they deny themselves the ability to it, to do it. Does that kind of make sense? Like, again, the scenario we use for the one is, is, you know, the starving man in the desert or a starving person in the desert who's like, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving. And somebody comes and goes, here, a cupcake. And they go, mm, no. And it's like, what? Here, you're starving, eat the cupcake. And it's like, mm, no. And it's like, what, why? And it's like, I just don't want that cupcake. I want a different cupcake. And it's like, what? Eat the cupcake. You're gonna die. Like, you're gonna die. You know what I mean? You're gonna die. And they just can't. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy of like constant self-sabotage. That isn't just based off trauma, though you could argue that trauma to the human, to the fetus all the way into, you know, puberty could have caused a lack of introspection to be possible to some extent. So it could always end up being trauma in the end, but the trauma can be the literal reason. Like psychosis isn't being a one. You're not a one because you're in psychosis. You're not a one if you're in a coma. You know, you're not a one if you're a baby. So to be a one is to make the decision not to eat the cupcake. Whether or not you know better is where the introspection question comes in. Does, does Boogie really not know better? Or is he literally just not eating the fucking cupcake? Boogie, for the life of him, cannot eat the cupcake. Like, he cannot eat the cupcake. He'll eat everything else. He won't eat the cupcake. Why won't Boogie eat the cupcake? No matter how he how he's helped, no matter how much money he's made, no matter how many resources were available to him, he never ate the cupcake. That's the thing about ones. No matter the resources, no matter the help. You know how people who are disabled, they're, they're having mental health crises. All they need is the right resources. Boogie had opportunities. He had all the right resources and it never mattered. Why? Now, when I created the level system, I had people in my life that matched this description and I didn't know where to put them. Because twos, they'll eat the cupcake. Look at, look at Diddy. Diddy's eating the cupcake. He's like, oh, do they want my passports? I'll sell my plane. That's, that's Diddy eating the cupcake. Diddy's like, okay, what's the game? I'll, I'll sell my plane. I don't need it. I'm going to prove to the cops I'm playing their game. He's introspective. He's extrospective. Diddy's not a one. Diddy knows he's being methodical. He's being thoughtful. He's very successful. Like, but Boogie, with all of his access hasn't managed. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Great question. Do any of the YouTube tiers include Patreon or are they separate? They're separate subscriptions because YouTube is all ages. I can't help that. But Patreon is 18 plus. We do a lot of philosophy events and I do not want to talk to your parents. So any minors in my audience, which is very few, my analytics say I have like no people that are minors, but who knows? I don't want them to have access to my discord. I do not want to talk to kids. See how we protect our communities? We kick them out. You cannot join my discord if you're under 18. Please do not do this. This is protect everyone in the community. So Patreon is paid. It supports the content, but it also has events that I just, I don't want kids there. Okay, no offense. Sorry, kiddos. But like, it's not your time. When you turn 18, you can join. I think Patreon shouldn't even have kids being able to give money, but you know, whatever. You know, we got, yeah, we got it. Exactly. We don't want an Ava Tyson scenario. We don't want anyone, no funny business on the Discord. Okay, no funny business in my business. So YouTube and, 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 Dis and Patreon are different. They offer different perks. Different things get, you know, given to different people. So if you want an 18 plus community that's interested in philosophy and all these other things, we do watch events, we do discussion events, we do all these things. Come join the Discord, support the content. Okay, but does that make sense on the levels? Like at the end of the day, like Diddy is eating the cupcake, but Boogie won't. And that will never not be interesting to me. Let's see. Do you think evil in a person only exists as a result of trauma? 
I think evil is furthest from joy. So evil is when you're out of alignment with your joy. Alignment is when you have a good relationship with your introspection, extrospection, and you understand and are having a good relationship with yourself. So the closer you are to your joy, the more in sim- positive symbiosis you are with the self, right? So when you're in your evil, you're furthest from your joy in a philosophical sense, right? You're furthest from your joy. Now, p- p- like I think Diddy, I think sex traffickers, I don't think these people are joyful. They might be happy, but they're not joyful. People can be happy in their evil. It doesn't mean they're joyful. And I think this is a very big distinction that only makes sense in philosophy circles since everybody else is so busy thinking about it from a bubbled perspective that is like good, evil, like morals, jail, not jail, politics. In a philosophical sense, the journey of a human, of a consciousness to move through the earth When you're out of sync with your consciousness, you're going to distract yourself with the material. You're going to distract yourself with these things. Diddy distracts himself with this gluttony, this hedonism. Hedonism is a a distraction, right? All of these things are a distraction from being in sync with your joy. And so Diddy isn't joyful, but he's happy enough. And I think this is what we forget is happiness is a feeling. It's an emotion. There's nothing consistent about happiness. Just like sadness, you're not sad every day, are you? Damn. And if you are, we got to check on that, girl. But also, there is an appropriate time to be sad. So joy remains even when you're sad. Even when I'm sad, I'm joyful. Because my sadness is appropriate. My happiness is appropriate. Now, Diddy is sadistic, right? So Diddy's happiness is sadism, but that's why you have to be careful. It's why even at the BDSM dungeons, you have to be careful that you're not engaging with a Diddy sadist. Because sadism isn't always Diddy, but Diddy's are sadists. (sighs) You know? Maven says Diddy dressed up as the Joker for Halloween, and I'm now convinced that's how he sees himself. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's see. I think IQ and talent have something to do with what answers you come up with. You mean like in life? Like you mean because of introspection? I think it's important also to note that all things contribute to how you have a relationship with life, regardless of what it is. Like all things that you are contribute to how you process everything that you are. So I can't predict who will be more introspective than another person based off of something like gender, IQ, race. Like, I don't know. Because none of those things matter alone, right? Um, I don't know if that's what that commenter meant, but I just wanted to say it. Like, when you're making these decisions in life, like, I think a very introspective person could have a 95 IQ or 140 IQ. It just doesn't fucking matter. Like, if people think, like, oh, to be more introspective, I need to be higher than 95. No. I don't think so. Like, I don't see any evidence for that. Right? So, for me, I think this, like, romanticism of IQ like people who have average IQ wishing they had higher IQ. Why? Everybody like needs to learn everything on the extreme is never going to help you. High IQ is a form of disability just like low IQ is. Being in the middle, being the average has more opportunity for growth than you think it does. I think people forget that. All right, let's move on to another horrible story about another horrible man. I'm sorry to do this to you. So get your tea, get your water, get whatever you need. It's not a good story, guys. It's not a good story. Oh, wait, great question before we head out. Can a two truly understand what it means to be a five? No. No. Not really. Because it's an embodied experience. It has has to be in the same way A straight person can't really know what it's like to be gay. Same thing. You cannot know unless you are. And you still have to actively work on it. I have a theory right now. We've been discussing heavily in the Discord if fives can go back to twos. Because I don't think so. But I think fives can choose not to engage with their introspection. End up getting swallowed up and tethered back into the two bubbles. Right? Yes, Chad asks, can there be an inactive two? Or an inactive five. Sorry, inactive five. Yes, I think... Ultimately, you can be a person who's not acting in your fiveness. And so you get tethered down. It's like, I always use like the wars as the example, like Palestine and Israel versus Russia, Ukraine. Like if you get bogged down in those bubbles, 
that's not a five perspective. A five perspective has only the humanity perspective of those wars. Like it doesn't pick a victor. Like if you're somebody who's like Israel has to win. Okay. That's not a five perspective. That is a political perspective or a personal perspective because you know somebody in Israel maybe. Like if you're somebody who's like this person has to win. Win what? Win what? Even the conversations we have here. Like all of these conversations are bubble talk at the end of the day. And not that fives don't live in bubbles, but fives are actively, they're in knowledge of the bubbles. So there's like when I'm meditating and I'm actively in like my five space and I'm like, okay, like you are just another energy in the world. Like you're just another person in the world. There's nothing special or unique about you. And yet you're having this experience and that's pretty special and unique. That's a very distinct and very different experience than somebody who always thinks they have to know who's good or bad. Going back to the video we watched yesterday, right? Somebody always needs to know who the good or the bad guy is. That is a micro positioning. Fives are on the macro, right? Twos on the micro, threes, fives exist on the micro. I still got to pay my bills and pay tax, girl. Doesn't matter if I don't live in the U.S., I still got to pay U.S. tax. But what does this have to do with the five? The five is the person that exists and a realization that all of this is a construct of existence itself. And that's really hard to accept because we'd like to think all these things really matter. They matter because they're on the micro level. But on the macro level, you're just ex- life experiencing itself. You're literally life experiencing itself. That is a very different way of viewing your existence. And we certainly aren't raised to see ourselves that way. So it's very difficult, right, to understand unless you've been there, which is why it's always interesting to me to see people who identify themselves as fives get, like, angry or upset over things when we're having, like, I always say, if a five talks to me one-on-one, then what are we talking about? A conversation between fives, there's nothing to talk about because we're just experiencing our life. What are, what are we going to talk about? Politics? Why? What is there to talk about? It's just humans experiencing life. So even my stream, even me having a content creator, I'm not making content for fives. I'm making content for threes and fours. I always have said that. My content is for threes and fours. People who are on the cusp, people who are like, hey, I want my life to be a little bit better. Or even some twos that are like, hey, I want my life to be better. Okay, I can give a tool. I can give plenty of tools to the twos. Hell yeah, give me your bubble. What is it? Like when I get a caller that's religious, I'm like, what's your religion? Let me Google it. And I'll research it. I'm like, okay, according to your religion, this is a tool you need. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever find it eating at spoons to be the higher level of introspection? I think it gives me more spoons. I think I am the most at peace when I'm vibing. You know, um, but I think to get there is really exhausting. But I think once you're in that meditative space and you like are in your five space, I think it's the best space. Yeah, I think it's the best way to be. Let's see, for me, for you, for, for for people that are meant to go there. It has to be where your joy is. If your joy is being a two, you gotta be a two. If your joy is being a five, you gotta be a five. You got to follow your joy. That's the only thing that matters. It's not what level you are. It's where your joy is found. And trust me, if you're meant to be a five, you won't be joyful as a two. But if you're not meant to be a five and you try to be there, you'll also not be joyful as a two. You feel me? So you gotta be joyful. Joyful, 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 joyful. Um, let's see. Fives understand bubbles exist even if they don't name it like that. It like that. It name it that. Bubble fives are in a present state of mind. So when you think about the future, you're not in a f- present state of mind. When you think about the past, you're not in a present state of mind. Fives have the realization that like, okay. We really are just life experiencing itself. We are an asteroid floating through space. We are a tree putting its roots in the earth. We are just like the dog. It's kind of like popping layers of understanding. Like, you know, when you have that realization of like, oh my God, like we're eating animals. Yeah, you're eating animals. And you got to make a decision if you're okay with that. And then the irony, and I saw this vegan TikTok the other day that was like, People think killing dogs and eating cats is disgusting, but you're willing to kill all these other animals. And I do think there's a hypocrisy there. 
I do think it makes no sense to be a meat eater that thinks you shouldn't eat cats or dogs. Aren't they just animals? But see how the bubbles, we put an affection towards cats and dogs because we were raised and constructed that way. There's a construct to tell us the life of a dog or a cat is more valuable than a cow or a pig, even though the intelligence of a pig is beyond a dog or a cat. And at the same time, I'm a meat eater. I had some chicken today, girl, no regrets. Because I'm life consuming life. Like we are in a cycle of life. But it is still an animal. And humans are animals. And at the same time, we have this like relationship with intelligence that lets us think we're bigger than that. Right? I think that's hard for people to process. I really do. And I don't blame them. It makes you feel really good to protect cats and dogs. But parrots and pigs are quite intelligent. And maybe you should feel a little bit bad about that. But maybe not. Because you're just life experiencing it yourself, you know? Uh, Discord says being in the moment as a five to me feels like when you do the synchronization in the Assassin's Creed games. I don't know what that means, but I love that for you. Okay. Silly says, can you be joyful as a three or a four? I always hear you giving the extreme examples, two or five. I don't think so. Three and four are bridge opportunities. So threes, I don't, I think threes are, have to choose. Are you going to be a two or a four? Well, really a five. Four is a state of transition. Three is a state of transition. You can't be a three or a four and be joyful. They're just, they're unfinished. Fives are finished, but there's always more. Twos are finished, but there's always more. Or in some cases, less. But I think threes and fours can never be joyful because, uh, but not, but hear me out. You can be joyful in the journey, but I think it looks unfinished. I don't think you can stay a three or a four. Let me say it like that. I don't think you can stay a three or a four. You have to make a decision. And the decision is temporary anyways, right? But ultimately, they're transitional. Um, since I'm bi, does that mean I know what it's like to be straight and gay or gay or neither? No. Bisexual, pansexual people have no idea what it's like to be straight or gay. We are living a different bubble. I have no idea what it's like to be a straight person. I have zero clue. I've never known. I've known I was queer since I was a little kid. I have no experience being a straight person. And regardless of the fact that I'm married to a perceived man, like I have zero understanding of what it like what it is like to be straight. I do I do not have that lived experience. And that's the thing that's so interesting. Like I I don't I don't know. You I and it is different. It is different. What about sixes? Look, my levels are focused on stages one through five. Everything after that, cool. There is something after that. I just don't, my work isn't about that. My life is about that. Like I'm doing that journey now, but I still call myself a five because it's the language that I use. But whatever is after five, it's not in my level system, right? Like my level system is one through five, you know? And I know I get these crazy emails that I never respond to where people are like, Brittany, there's levels six, seven, and eight. And when you reach them, you can travel through time. Girl, please go to the doctor. Because if you're traveling through time, why are you emailing me about it? Just think about how stupid that is. You can travel through time, so you're going to email a random YouTuber? Please think about how stupid that is. If I had superpowers, I would never tell any of you bitches. Like, please let, let me say this clearly. If I was an X-Men and I found out I could bend fire or whatever the fuck else, if I found out I was fucking Avatar State, none of you bitches would know. None of you bitches would know. There ain't no way I would tell anybody I could travel through time. None of you bitches would know. I wouldn't tell my family. I wouldn't tell my sister. The only bitch I would tell is the bitch I married. That's it, bitch. Okay? Nobody else gonna know I can travel through time. What a ridiculous thing to tell somebody. You can travel through time while you telling me, girl, shh, keep that shit to yourself. That's crazy. And then you run the risk of the government coming and doing experiments on you. Girl, ain't no fucking way. You know, ain't no fucking way. That's crazy, bro. What a ridiculous decision to tell me you can travel through time, girl. Is it possible to know you're a five, feel joyful, but also lonely? from how little you can relate to people? No, loneliness is for people who are on a different journey. You shouldn't feel lonely as a five. It would be very strange. You shouldn't even feel lonely as a two. Twos shouldn't feel lonely either. Nobody should feel lonely. Well, everyone feels lonely until they don't. I felt lonely as a two. Feeling lonely is an out of sync relationship with the self. 
loneliness is you are not having a good relationship with yourself. Twos, don't have to feel lonely. Fives, don't have to feel lonely. But fives aren't going to feel lonely because twos don't understand them. Because they're supposed to understand twos. Does that make sense? If you're in your five headspace, that's it. Everybody is just doing their thing. There's nothing to be sad about. There's nothing to be anything about. You're just experiencing life. They're on a journey. You're on a journey. Being sad, like a five being sad about a two would be like the ocean being upset. I don't know that there's trash in it. The ocean isn't upset there's trash in it. It's just existing. We're all just existing. But loneliness is a lack of relationship with your consciousness. And everybody experiences it until they don't. So to see a five experience loneliness would be like, hey, are you having a mental health crisis? Because also, and this is a very important, you're still a body with a brain. So if you're a five and you experience Alzheimer's or cancer or something else, you might be sad. You might have a normal emotional reaction. You could be having a mental health crisis. What if you're medically triggered as a five? That's happened to me. I've been medically triggered as a five because my brain is misfiring. And so my consciousness is in the back of my head going, hey, stop it. Like when I'm triggered medically, I'm still in my head going, what are you doing? Stop what you're doing. Relax. We're safe. We're fine. And my body's like, we're not fine. We're not fine. Everything's bad. And I'm like, no, everything's great. You just like relax. That voice inside of my head that's telling my brain to be quiet and to tell my body to calm down. That's the me. The me doesn't stop being me, but damn. And I used to think when I was triggered, it was who I was. Once I got diagnosed and I realized I was having medical triggers, I was like, oh, wait a second. So I'm having like a mis misfiring in my brain. I'm having a miscalculation and my brain is trying to protect itself. Okay, hold on. We can get it back together. It's like a computer or an engine, a car engine that's going. And you're like, oh God, the car's about to break down. Okay, the driver doesn't break down because the car does. I don't break down because my car breaks down. But I do work my best with it. And I can't always do the same thing I can do. Like I can't drive a car that's broken down. But at least I don't have to break down because my car's broken down. You know? But, okay. <sighs> Let's see. Is feeling not seen the same as lonely? I think yes, and if you don't see yourself, you're going to feel lonely. If others don't see you, it can feel lonely. But others not, others not seeing you doesn't feel lonely once you can see yourself. Once you can truly see yourself, other people not being able to see you doesn't translate to loneliness. It translates to, okay, cool. Got it. Read Drew's book. I really recommend it. Drew actually covers this in the book. I think Drew's probably like a two. Um, she definitely fits into that narrative, but she has a great passage on this. Um, she has a great, great passage on loneliness and being single and seeing herself. She does have a great passage on this. So if you guys want to like a digestible, really good example of like a really great two bubble, it's one of my favorite bubbles. Like the empowered woman that decentralizes a man in her life bubble is like one of my favorites. So if you want to jump into that bubble, her book is called Loud, Drew a Afawalo, Afawalo, and it's on Spotify Premium if you have Premium. You know, yes, Kelsey says, is learning to see oneself the main quest? I think it should be everyone's main quest, but usually when you're born into a bubble, the bubble literally tells you, generally speaking, to make everybody else the focus. And that's why people have started to fight it. Now, you can be a two- whose main quest is to see yourself. Usually people try to validate themselves to the outside. What car do I drive? What girl do I have? What? How much money do I have? And then the five is in relation to the universe. So the, the two asks, who am I in relation to my culture, my bubble, my people? And the five asks, who am I in relation to the universe? And that is the biggest distinction. When I'm asking who Brittany is, I ask, who am I in relation to my family? Who am I in relation to my job? Who am I in relation to my husband? Who am I in relation to my cat? Who am I in relation to my neighbors? Who am I in relation to my gender? Who am I in relation to my color? Who am I in relation to my age? Who am I in relation to my height? Who am I in relation to my body? Who am I in relation to my brain? Who am I in relation to my spirit? Who am I in relation to my philosophy? Who am I in relation to blah, 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 blah. And then I ask myself, who am I in relationship to? The universe, the stars, the earth, the cosmos. 
Who am I in relationship to this big floating rock in space that I am on? And these are questions that take years. To, I'm still answering them right now. I just had another epiphany about myself the other day where I was like, oh, and I called my friend and I was like, I got to tell you about this. And she was like, that makes sense. I was like, no, girl, I just had this great epiphany about myself. And may I have a thousand more of those before I die? Because there's always a way to update those questions. Maybe it's time. Has it been long enough? Usually in the Discord, we do an event called Are You a Two or a Five? And we ask like a group of questions. And I usually do this. I've done this twice now. We should do it again if it's been, I think it's been definitely more than six months. Maybe it's even been a year. We should do the event again. And it's just meant to ask yourself like these groups of questions because as simple as it feels to answer them, it shouldn't be. It should be a very complex answer. Who am I in relation to my culture? Who am I in relation to my gender? This should not be a simple answer. If you're diving deep into introspection for that sort of relationship with the universe, if it, you're just hoping to be within the bubble, then of course, like, then the, then the answers would be simplified. You know, they would be something like, I'm white. I'm Middle Eastern. I'm gay. Like, okay, I'm Catholic. I'm Mormon. Like, you would just, that's it. That's who I am. Okay. Great. And then if I say, what else? They're like, what else is there? What else? What else is there? What else? It's like that infamous scene from The Swan Princess where Derek goes, I'm in love with you. And she goes, oh. And he goes, you're so beautiful. And she goes, what else? And he goes, what else is there? And then everyone's like, oh, no. Like, what do you mean what else is there? Like, what an ick, Derek. What an ick. But some people, what else is there is where they stop, you know, is where they stop. You know what I'm saying? And I love that for them. It is not my journey to get Derek to ask more introspective questions or extrospective questions. Not my business. Let's see, not being able to really connect with someone over an extended period of time is really hard, dude. I think people who can't do that are expecting that person to connect with them on all parts. And I really think the greatest tool I can give you is to only connect with people in the way you can. Because if you literally can't find one way to connect with people, you got to go to therapy. Something's wrong with your brain. You should be able to connect in little ways with most people. We both like the same type of bread. That's seeing each other. We both like the same kind of anime. Oh my God, we both like the same. Seeing each other is having things in common. That's what it is. It's seeing a part of you that feels seen. Like, oh, when you relate yourself to autism, it relates myself to autism. When you talk about your ADHD, oh my God, that's the kind of ADHD I have. Okay, that's one way you know that person. That's what being seen is. But I think sometimes we get into these relationships, I fell for this, I fell for this, where you think everyone should see every single part of you. But how could they? How could I ask a straight person to understand my queerness? They'll never be able to see it in that way. So they'll have to navigate and seeing me another way. Well, we both like anime. Do we both like the same anime? What if you're an Evangelion Naruto watcher? When I'm a, a, a uh, Attack on Titan AOT, like One Piece watcher, you don't like, how are we going to have, we can't have a conversation now. We're different bubbles of anime. It's like, just because we both watch anime doesn't mean we see each other, though sometimes we can make do with what we know a little bit about each other's anime favorites. You know what I'm saying? Like when we're having these kind of overlaps, we have to think about what way are we trying to be seen? Doom says, Brittany, is that a painting of you? These two are not of me. These are not me. The middle one is me only. Just the middle one is me. Just that one. The two on the right are not me. The two on the right and left are not me, for the record. But the middle one is. Just the middle one. The other two are not of me. By Sarah Wands. By Sarah Wands. I follow uh, her on Instagram. You guys can check it out. I tagged her also in some of my recent posts with the art. Let's see, I am connecting with people on basic levels. I don't expect people to see every part of me, but I want to be seen deeper by maybe one person. I'm so viewed very physically and almost nothing else. That's so valid. And that is the best experience. As somebody who has one single person in her life who I feel like sees every part of me, it is the greatest experience I've ever had. But I also would have been fine if it never happened. And I think what I want to encourage people to do is get to the point where it doesn't matter if it happens or not. But that disconnect between the desire to have it and it's eating up at your life or even making your life worse 
and having it, that's the part. Because my partner and I were in the same spot where we went on this really great journey and he was completely content with his life. I was completely content with mine. And it would have been great to meet that person, but it didn't matter. We weren't experiencing loneliness. We were both very content in our lives. And we were both very isolated people in a sense. Like I had family and friends. He has family and friends. But when we came home to our own apartments, that's when we felt the best. I love having my own space. He lived alone. You know, we're both people who just love our own company. We are our best company. And then we met each other and it was the greatest experience. I won't, I'm, I'm not trying to undersell it. It's, I'm trying to, I'm not even trying to over, I'm trying to say it is the greatest experience, but it wouldn't have mattered if it happened or not. Because before it happened, one, I didn't know what it was like anyways, but two, I was completely happy with my life. He was completely happy with his. We weren't lonely. And that's where I want to get everybody to be. I want everyone to get, that's why I say read Drew's book because Drew's a two, I think, I, you know, I don't know, right? But I'm guessing she's a two. And she really covers that. And I think that's perfect, right? Like, I think that's really perfect. Um, Taylor says, what is it about Drew that makes her too? Is it the lack of nuance with her bubble? Um, you know, based off of the limited things I've seen from her in her book, I would say in all of her writing and in all of the things I've seen her do, she never asks the questions about who are you in the universe. She always asks questions about like, who are you within the bubble? And that's a very specific relationship with the self. She's a really good example. I mean, it's a great book. I think it's like a great way to, you know, have that conversation with yourself. If you feel like you're a pick me, if you feel like you need men's validation, if you feel lonely because you're not ready to be by yourself, I think she covers all of those topics really well from a very specific bubble that's very relatable to a lot of people. But nowhere in her writing has I see, have I seen her sort of ask the bigger questions. And that's totally valid as well. Like, you know, Totally valid as well. Um, which Drew is this? This is Drew Afawalo. No, no, not a uh, TikToker. Drew Afawalo, now New York Times bestseller. Her book is called Loud. Let's see. Yeah, I don't have my own space or the space with people I actually feel comfortable around. Then it sounds like your journey is to live on your own. For me, my journey was to live on my own. One of the things I pride myself in knowing is that if everyone in my life died, I would be able to support myself. My job would be secure. I'd be able to get an apartment. My credit's over 700. Like for me, something I pride myself in is that I can play this capitalistic game pretty fucking well for a girl that can't stand a nine to five. And for a girl that used to cry in the freezer at work, okay? I pride myself in this because it's the greatest gift I ever gave myself was independence. But again, that for me was my journey. Maybe that's yours. I need to know I feel comfortable living in a space that's good for me. Now, I even lived with my brothers during COVID and that was so fun. We all decided to get an apartment together or a townhouse and that was a great experience. But all of us were very solitary. We minded our own business. We went into our own rooms at the end of the day. But, you know, we're siblings who grew up together, you know? <laughs> Girl, I'm trying. My past self made the worst choice being dependent on an unreliable man. Hey, been there, done that. It's okay. You'll get there. And this is the journey that's going to give you the tools. This is the journey that's going to give you the tools. And this is what's amazing about life. Is if you learn to suffer wisely and you learn the tools, then this is a part of that journey. It took me a very long time to be independent. A very long time. Like 33, I would say I became independent. Like really independent. That's a long time. You know, and it's never too late to start. <laughs> Dang, I used to cry in the freezer. Do other people do this? Oh, yes. And we used to take, we used to take uh, shifts. My coworkers and I would be like, I'm going to cry in the freezer. Even my boss was like, I'm going to the freezer. And that was like our code words to each other. I'm going to the freezer. And that's what we do. We'd cry in the freezer. We'd also dry hump in the freezer. But you know what? Nobody talks about it. We don't need to talk about that. Listen, lots of things happened in the freezers. Okay, let's see. When you identify yourself as becoming independent at 33, do you mean strictly financially and in other ways? It means... Like making enough money to be financially independent, having job security, having good credit, and being able to basically do what I needed to do to get to the next step. It means if everybody else in my life died, I'd be fine. By 33, if everybody else in my life died, all my support systems, all the people in my life that I've relied on, if they all died, I'd be chilling. Not because I wouldn't be sad, but because I would have, I did the things. In my life before, I felt like if my whole inner circle died, I would have died with them. I did. I felt like if my whole inner circle died, I probably would have died with them just because of functionality. But I learned so much. Like 33 was when it all came to fruition. Not when I decided to do it, by the way. I decided to do it initially, but I had to build it up at 30 
I sat myself down and I said, okay, bitch, let's fucking go. Now, 30, I also became a five and knew myself and stopped being lonely. 30 was a big year for Brittany. So by 30, I made the decision, okay, get your shit together. And by 33, I attained my goal and I'm chilling. And the goal is to maintain it, which at this point, I think I know how to play the game good enough that I should be fine. But games always change and that's why you have to adapt. And I think that is what's so scary. Adapt, adapt, adapt. If you do not adapt, you will die. And the good news is everybody dies. So it doesn't even matter if you adapt unless it happens to coincide with your joy. My joy requires me to adapt. Know yourself well enough to know your joy because that's all that matters, girl. And then you die, whether you're joyful or not. You know, (laughs) whether you're joyful or not, you're going to die. Okay. All right. Give me a few seconds to take a little bit of a break and we'll get into the next story. Life is a fool. 